So uh, here is the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M. I've been doing some research and I can't seem to find much information about it online, so I figured I'd do it myself. I got it for about two ninety nine on Amazon plus taxes and free shipping. And uh, I really wanted to know what it was like and I didn't want to spend $600 on a bamboo lab. So I'll be replacing my Ender 3 Pro I've got done some updates of my own on it. Got PEI sheet, got some stiffer springs, got some co a cooling um, fixture on here. Put on um, a all metal gear assembly on here. Uh, there's a big tree at tech, uh, SKR Mini E3 V1.2 in here. It, it prints pretty good. Uh, but usually it's a decent amount of configuration beforehand, so that's why I went back to uh, the drawing board a little bit. Kind of want something that just works. And then over here I got uh, a filament dryer, the Ebos. It's currently drying out my green filament so I can put it in here. And uh, so uh, let's get to unboxing it. So I've taken my printer off, pushed over some of the things, and don't mind any of that. Uh, so let's see, what do, what do we get? So we get a after sales service manual, it looks like. And then, um, uh, let's see, oh, there's some pieces of cardboard in here. Take those out, pile there. And then it looks like, looks like this piece comes out here, I'll take that out. There we go, and so, it looks like I need to just take out the the printer itself. All right, I've taken out the printer. It looks like nothing else is in the box. So I put some of the cardboard and uh, I probably want that. So I'll keep that out. And then, uh, so I put it up here. Hopefully that wasn't too fast for movement. And then I'll, I'll unbox it and, uh, or unwrap it. And then we'll just go from there. Let's see, all right, so Took off a little bit of the plastic. Looks like we got a PTFE tube, um, zip tied. No, no, it's got little clips on it, looks like. So that's pretty cool. Um, then we got some power cord, that's pretty handy. Set that down. And then, um, oh sweet, some test filament. That's always nice to have. And then, uh, get a box. Oh, oh, it looks like this piece might come out. Um, all right, I need, I need my hands again. All right, so I took the, the foam out, and so down here, let's see what else we got. Oh, this looks like the display. Awesome, need that. And then, um... All right, hands again. Looks like nothing else is in there the foam so let's open up this box to see what's in here we've got some clippers it's always good to have i guess 3d printing adhesives so that must be like a glue stick i assume strong adhesive easy release yeah okay and then we've got i i don't know what this is i guess i'll have to read the manual for that we got some screws I got some grease. I got some like super grease or something, so might not use that. We'll see. Um, got a screwdriver. That's pretty handy. I'll put that back in there so we don't lose it. And uh, looks looks like that's it in this box. All right, so and then uh, in the printer, it looks pretty bare in here. So I'm gonna take off the plastic and uh, we'll. I'll maybe take some out some of this foam and then I'll come back. All right, so uh, this I think is the filament holder. Um, I I might put it on, but we'll see because I do have this uh, right next to it, and so I I think I can probably get that to squeeze in um, this, this little piece. And uh, but I think that's what those other screws are for. And uh, the other thing. The other thing I kind of heard about was the fans are kind of uh, loud back here. So we'll see if that's actually the case. Uh, I mean, I, 
I can't imagine that they would have really changed much of that or anything like that, but we'll we'll see when we turn it on. And then um, then I'll let me switch it around and uh, or I'll, I'll put this in and I'll switch it around. Look at that. So I found the manual. So open the box. Kind of already did a whole bunch of this without the manual. Oops. All right. So let's see. Um, move the extruder according to the arrow directions. Um, oh, well, it didn't, it, it just removed anyway. Um, so there's the packing list. Oh, I guess you can't really see that. Hold on. All right. So that uh, might be a little better packing list. So now, um, let's see, install the spool holder. So I did that. Um, and then insert the filament too. I did that. That's good. And then other end into the detection sensor. Got that going on. And then, oh, looks like my phone's struggling. Hold on. There we go. Looks a little better. So now we want to install the screen as shown above in the picture. Insert the screen cable into the connector. Lift the buckle on the screen's cable socket to the indicated position. Then insert the screen cable in there. Ensure proper insertion and check alignment. B, press down on the buckle. Okay, so I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I, I got the screen on right here. So it just had a little ribbon cable was taped on and then a little connector. So be careful, make sure that that gets in and then goes on and slides to the left. And then, so I've heard a, a whole bunch of things about washing this. So I'm also gonna go wash that real quick with a little bit of soap, a little bit of water and wipe it all down. And then um, we'll continue on to uh, whatever the next step is. Let's see here. Okay, um, I've already done that. Unlock the build plate. Uh, oh, so I might actually need to do that very shortly. We'll see. And then um, I've already routed the power switch, uh, power cable. It's not on, so uh, it hasn't done anything. And I don't know anything about fan noise yet. But let me let me unlock the build plate and wash the plate, and then we can power it on, see how loud it is, and all that. And maybe we'll get a first print going on. All right. So I have uh, washed. This dried it real nice. I used a little bit of Dawn dish soap. And then, uh, so like I said earlier, that the, the power cord was already plugged in. So let's go back here. I uh, also unlocked the build plate. So there were just four little screws. I guess they're, they're actually kind of decent length. And uh, so they're located at each of these arrows. And then there's two back here and then one right there. And then, so now the next step is to plug in power and let's follow uh, the instructions. Um, I'm gonna probably try to do it without network access, but we'll see if that actually works or not. And uh, for the time being, I'll just keep this on, protect the screen a little bit. Um, there's definitely some fan noise. Uh, some's coming from here. Let me turn this off. That's definitely uh, some noises. Let's see what's it saying. Initialization. Okay, I'll give that a minute. And so it does sound like there is there is fan fan noise. And uh, if you if you like white noise while you're sleeping, it's probably all right. But I it is it is a little louder than I was hoping. But that's okay. I I think my Ender Three probably was louder while I was printing. So please confirm all packing materials are taken out. Uh, needs to be calibrated. Ensure the heat is been locked. All right, all right, so I got all four screws out and then um, all the packing material is out. Before I start this, I did notice back here, it looks like there's some room for some desiccant packs maybe? Uh, that I There's very, something very similar in my filament dryer, so that'd be kind of cool if it was. I get, I guess it works better if, oh, camera's changed on me again. Uh, it would probably work better if this was enclosed. And since this is just the, the 5M, uh, not the enclosed one. So it's it probably a little, 
little different. I might might print the enclosure for it, uh, but I still need to buy the acrylic pieces, I believe. And so um, let's start, let's just start this preparation. So looks like it's homing. And uh, I'll, I'll put this on, a, actually, I'll just start a new video. So I guess that moving up and down is a little loud. That seems kind of loud. Well, I guess we'll see about how how the the printing sounds are, because it might not be something that I really want to leave running while I'm printing. Oh, okay, so it's heating up. Um, no, focus. There we go. It's 90, 90, 100. Okay, so doing some leveling right now. And my phone keeps switching cameras on me. Must be my lighting's kind of funny. So we'll keep on rolling. Might... This printer, I believe, is about like 220 by 220 by uh, 220, maybe? Um, I guess I don't exactly know. Let me look and see if I can find some specifications, it just got a little loud. Oh yeah, no, 220 by 220 by 220. And so, I it's about the same size as my Ender 3, but uh, like size-wise itself, this is definitely getting a little louder than I was expecting. Uh, size-wise of the, the printer body itself, it, it probably takes up about the same footprint as my Ender 3 Pro. That one I got in about 2018 uh, was when it was purchased. Oh, it looks like it's doing something else. Oh, it might be cooling off? Huh. Not really sure what's going on there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but, so, it's definitely not as big as I was expecting. I, I haven't actually seen any Bamboo Lab printers in person. Or more specifically, their XY ones. I, I think I may have seen an A1 somewhere, but... Not quite sure. Uh, I'll, uh, I think I'll stop now and just see until it finishes and I'll let you know if I see anything funny. Oh, so it just finished cooling off. So it looks like it's doing its leveling itself. Oh, it's got a timer on here. That's kind of handy. So it looks like it takes about seven minutes to do it. So I'll be back when that seven minutes is done. But yeah, the fan is on here, I think it is. It's, it's kind of loud. Um, so this is probably a, like a, I'm going to set the printer to print while I'm at work or school kind of print, but that's, that's okay. Uh, I, I don't tend to have prints that are too, too long in terms of like days. So, uh, that it should be okay. And this printer seems okay enough to probably leave like once it starts, but I don't know if I quite should be saying that, but. Now it looks like it's doing its vibration testing. I don't know if it, you can quite see that, but it's going back and forth really, really fast. And, uh, oh, it's starting to ramp up. I think the Bamboo Lab printers do this. Apparently there was an update that made them even quieter. I, I don't know much, too much about them, but uh, may, maybe th this uh, printer will get some updates for that. We'll see. All right, so it finished, and uh, it had just a little Flash Forge logo on here. I, I didn't get to recording it because I was like, oh, maybe it's frozen or something. And then I tapped it, and then it brought up this menu. So uh, it talks about loading it. Cut off the filament, uh, pass it through the filament sensor, and insert into the feeding roller. That's what it says in here in the instructions, so I'll do that. All right, so it's heated up, and uh, so now it's extruding out. So it must be some test filament. They gave me some, uh, let's see if it will focus, probably not. Uh, blue, well, it says burnt titanium, there we go. And uh, so it wasn't much of it, but it's a uh, high speed print. Time. Oh, I guess there's some different temperatures, huh. Um, so give that a shot, that's what they gave me. So loading complete, it says, so um, let's, uh, clear off this stuff on here and put that in my trash pile and uh, let's, let's start a print.
Um, I guess it's gonna print a Q. Let's see what happens. So, must be centering a little bit. Or, or zeroing, I mean. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely on the louder side of printers. Um, but, and not much I can really do about that, probably. Uh, what else can we do on here? So, oh, we can look at extruder temperature, bed temperature, some small details. Um, no. Oh, looks so this must be what's on it already. Oh, you can't even see. There we go. So, I'll go back. So, the extruder temp, bed temp, there's just some information. Uh, looks like just some thing models that are already on here. Uh, I guess they can put a USB drive on here or something. Um, oh, okay, I guess they can't do that one right now. Um, position, so settings, that's kind of cool. Mess around. Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Hotspot. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'll definitely have to play around with that. I might plug that into my network. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know if I really need to connect it or not. Uh, Flash Cloud. I don't know too much about those. Please make sure. Oh, so I guess if you need to do some recalibration and then on here, rename it. Filament detect. Uh, I mean, we probably want that on. Sound. Uh, I guess I'll keep sound on for right now. I'll probably end up turning that off later. All right. Let's. Uh, I'll. I'll start recording again when it starts printing. All right. So it started printing. Six minutes ago. Um. Must be. Must have done a purge over there. And so. Get some here. Yeah, let's let's record with some light. There we go. There's some light, and uh, keep switching lenses on me. I'm gonna avoid that. Oh well. So let's look. Uh, the manual said something about uh, gluing. Oh, let's see. Gluing. Uh, it doesn't really appear that it needs to do that um, as of right now uh, but we'll, we'll see in the future definitely let me look in the manual this is quick print and then it will start printing and then it starts going into another language so that's probably about it it looks like um, and uh, let me do a, a time-lapse of this printing it and uh, it for first impressions though not really much of an elephant foot of really any, so that's definitely a good sign. Not doing a very good job of videoing this, sorry. Uh, but let's do the time lapse, so I'll be back. So I'm not very good at holding the camera for a time lapse, and I don't remember where I put my phone tripod, nor do I really have an amazing spot to put it, but we can zoom in here. Let's see, uh, doesn't seem like it's, oh, there we go. Like that, that looks pretty good. I, I, I'm kind of impressed. Like, straight out of the box. Oh, yeah. Eh, kind of. Um, like, uh, that looks really, really good. I, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm sure, sure other printers probably do it better or faster, but, eh, like, there's only so much I really want to spend on my printers, because it's all for hobby projects. So I'm not making money with any of it, so, uh, I, I'm probably going to be quite happy with this uh, from my first impressions. Uh, so I'll come back when this is done because I'm not doing time lapse. All right, so it just finished. Uh, looks like there's a little piece of string coming from the, the nozzle at the very end, but let's, let's pull this off and see what it looks like. So here's, here's the print right off the printer. Looks like there's a little bit on this left corner right here, but uh, I don't know. That's, that's way better than I was ever getting out of my Ender 3 Pro with my upgrades. And I forgot to add, I put a 0.6 millimeter 
0.06, no, 0.6 millimeter, I think, on the, my printer, my Ender 3, and I that gave me all sorts of headaches as well. I, I don't know. I maybe I'm just not, not too uh, good at that tinkering on there. But oh well, I had fun with it. But I kind of like this a lot more. So I think it's good money spent as far as I know. But I'm gonna give it a couple other prints maybe to print to see what what it's looking like. But I'm very 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 pleased with the results. So, uh, I think the second thing I'm going to print is just the, the Benchy, like, it's, it's on here, might as well. I got some more of that PLA, I mean, it gave, gave me a decent amount of it, so, not, not like a whole roll, but definitely enough to print a whole, a whole bunch of things with. So, I, I don't know if I really need to do leveling, but, sure, why not, let's, let's do it, let's, let's print this thing. So, this is going to heat up, I'll, I'll be back with the results. So it's not quite done yet. I was see, see um, oh, that was the screen that it showed earlier. Um, 69% done, printing 15 minutes. I think that's how long it's been printing. But I think that includes the leveling. I did have it level at the beginning. Uh, I said, well, why not? Sure, and just to see. And uh, it, it only takes like a, a two minutes or something. So it's not bad. Wait, here's the. The benchy so far. Cannot get this to focus. There we go. Got that to focus now. Uh, a little bit. It's coming in and out. Probably the extruder moving is not helping, but so far it looks pretty good. There's one little string right above my finger and uh, inside, but I'm not pretty good. I, I don't know what this like line is right here, but I'll look at that when it comes off. So. I'll let it keep printing. So it just finished printing with like uh, 21 minutes. Focus. There we go, 21 minutes. And so I'll, I'll take it off in a minute and uh, we'll inspect it under the, the light because lighting right here is not great. All right, so the Benchy just finished. Let's see here. So there's a little bit of stringing right here down at the bottom of the boat and then here up at the bow of the boat. Uh, I guess it's kind of hard to see. There it is and the light reflecting off of it. But overall the as I mean I am coming from like not really super amazing quality. So I I could be wrong of this looking great but in my eyes, this looks beautiful. Like, like it could be better, I suppose, on the arches and stuff. But that that's way better than I would ever have gotten on my Ender Three, it, even with so much all the tinkering that I did with it over the years. And there's not really elephant's foot. Not like I I don't even know if I'd say it's there. Uh, there's something right there, but. It, I, this filament could also be kind of hiding it a little bit, but it is immaculate compared to what I'm used to. And so this is going to be perfect for hobbyists. And so if you have a little bit more money to spend, as of right now, I, I highly recommend so far. I, I mean, this is my second print only, so take that with a grain of salt. But initial impressions are super, super high. So I was looking to see if I needed to update anything. It looks like I probably do 2.3.7. And so if I come down here, down to my laptop, it looks like uh, 2.4.5 is the newest version. I downloaded it and uh, I think it might be something that you put on a USB drive or something and move over. I might try that just to see if something pops up on the screen not really sure i can't really find much for information on it uh like i can find information about slicing and then the only information in this guide was firmware uh so it was to just connect to the wireless network and update the firmware ideally i don't do that probably uh, i'm i might end up just doing it so i have the latest firmware but I'm gonna try it on a USB stick to see what happens. 
So I, I've looked around a whole bunch just to see if there's anything that I could find for updating this as it is technically behind, but I haven't had any issues with the print quality. So uh, I tried putting a USB stick in with those things that were downloaded. It might be my USB stick is not formatted right. My USB stick is XFAT instead of FAT32, which I know a lot of uh, embedded stuff uses FAT32 if they use um, USB stuff. And uh, I tried connecting to Flash Print 5. I got it connected, and really the only thing I could change about the printer was the name. So I added my name, Noah Adventurer 5M. And uh, so, but it's it's not broke, so I'm going to keep it this way. And then, uh, so I'm probably going to do some other prints of myself of uh, something that is not loaded on here. Just try that out, see how, what's going on. But I, yeah, I. Once again, I, I don't think updating it is really quite necessary right now. So the next thing I'm going to print is a vase. And so I put it in vase mode. I uh, found a little USB drive and it's formatted in XFAT, I believe. And so I sliced it in Orca Slicer and then gonna watch it go, I guess. We'll see what happens. I also forgot to mention, I, I rotated my filament dryer and then so it's coming out the back right here. And then it's coming up through underneath the spool holder through the filament sensor up into it. So, so it started uh, leveling and uh, it came with, up with this warning. Hope triggered try to move. I'm just gonna try it again, see what happens. But uh, let's see, let's print. And let's try leveling one more time. Hopefully, hopefully that fixes it. Just redoing it. Maybe it was just a miss, miss uh, sense. It has successfully uh, done the leveling. I uh, just did it one more time and starting the actual print itself. Uh, from what I can see, it looks pretty decent, I guess. So we'll see where it goes. So the first layer uh, is done. So it looks, like it looks like going on a second layer and it starts moving real quick. And uh, that's, that's awesome. So down here, I do have my UPS, let's see. So when it was heating up, it was about 300-ish watts, I think. Uh, and now it's hovering around 70, 80. So like big current or a big draw right when it's heating up, but it looks like under 100, oh, over 100. Definitely dependent on how much it needs to heat and stuff like that, but it's not not too bad uh, energy-wise, I don't think. So, uh, the, this printed just a little bit ago. I, I took it off and I forgot to take a video of it, so uh, here it is. Uh, there's a little bit of dirt in there because I was test fitting it with my pot that I had uh, for my flowers, but it's come out really good. and. It's got some structuralness to it, and uh, it's not snapping or anything. And it, it was stuck to the plate the whole time that it was printing. And so this was the Adventure 5M Profile vase, or vase mode, however you want to say it, in Orca Slicer. And so once again, I think this, this looks pretty good. Let's see if I can get a close-up shot of it. I'm struggling to focus. Hmm. Let's try. There we go. It's a little better, but um, yeah, the the printing is super super good, and uh, I don't, it may be just because I'm coming from a bad printer, but I am very very happy with this.